In this video, you will see a demo on the process of steel making. The emphasis is being on the word process, as I'm not really going to make uh, fire and melt steel in the middle of the classroom here. Meet the two characters in the steel making. The first one being iron, abbreviated throughout the story as uppercase F, lowercase e, and carbon, just as important, abbreviated throughout the story as uppercase C. Now, you can see right away that iron is not the same as steel, and that's exactly the kind of process that I'm going to explain. Iron and carbon are elements, and elements are listed in the periodic table of elements. You can see carbon here as uppercase C, and in the middle here you can see iron, Fe. Around iron, you can see other metals that you might be familiar with. For example, here is chromium, copper, silver, and gold. Now the thing about the elements in the periodic table is that elements are pure, 100% pure, and they cannot be made any purer. Some metals can be found in their elemental forms in the ground. And uh, just as penning gold is a relatively simple process, iron making isn't because iron does not occur in its elemental form. Iron occurs in iron rich ore. What uh, ORE, ore, what iron ore is, is a mix of iron with other metals mixed in with it, as well as uh, dirt or uh, organic matter. So here is a piece of iron ore. This is iron pyrite. It's iron rich ore. It's got iron in it, say 30% of iron, and it's got other metals in it as well as impurities. And here is another iron rich ore. This is magnetite. It's ground smooth and uh, polished as I use this piece uh, in the classroom to hang sheets of paper on the whiteboard. So magnetite and iron pyrite are two ores, iron rich ores, from which iron can be melted out. This melting takes place in a blast furnace. Meet my blast furnace here and uh, this is how most blast furnaces function. They are loaded in from the top with uh, iron rich ores like magnetite or iron pyrite and uh, other material is also loaded in for example uh, limestone and coal when everything is loaded in and the blast furnace is full then uh, they're gonna set the whole thing on fire I'm not gonna set it on fire it's just this candle is standing in for me and don't worry it's not gonna melt the plastic they are a foot apart at least and the uh, what happens to the iron ore inside the blast furnace as it melts is that the heavier iron settles on the bottom and the lighter uh, impurities come up to the top and there, just like that. And they float on the top. Uh, there is a tap on the bottom of the blast furnace uh, through which the heavier uh, material, iron, can be poured out or let out. And the slag that's floating on the top, that's just screeded off and uh, is discarded. Now, as iron is molten out of uh, its ores, out comes raw iron. That's uh, sorry about the blue paint on this one, but uh, raw iron comes out of the blast furnace and uh, is taken to a steel mill. Raw iron is not steel, raw iron is just iron separated from the other metals inside a blast furnace and is just made pure. But it's uh, only approximately pure, it's, it's not 100% pure just yet. Uh, 
this raw iron is taken to a steel mill where it's typically uh, zapped with electricity and uh, the rest of the impurities are just burnt off in a steel mill. When uh, iron is reduced in a steel mill to its elemental form, it's got a little nicer color. It looks something like something like this. It's shinier and nice, and they make uh, simple shapes like this out of it. Now, that's not the final product. That is just elemental pure iron. Now, it rusts very easily, as you can uh, see it on uh, this sample here. And uh, raw iron is not steel and is not really useful. Uh, fairly soft and fairly weak. It's not strong. It, it is not steel. It needs to be made into steel. So and this is where the, the rest of the process comes in. When all the impurities are burnt out in the steel mill from uh, the uh, iron ores and the, the mixture of iron and all impurities are removed, then they add measured amount, carefully measured amount of carbon to it. What I have here is uh, close enough to elemental pure carbon. These are uh, what uh, you might call lead from a pencil, but it's not really lead what you're writing with. It's properly called graphite. And graphite is a form of carbon, just as coal is a form of carbon. Okay, so they add a small amount, a precisely measured amount of carbon to the pure elemental iron. What comes out of the process is steel and steel then in turn is made into structural shapes like this. I kind of sanded and ground this one to make it a little better looking so you can recognize an I-beam just get rid of these ones and uh, steel as is is uh, of many kinds for example there for example there is there we go there is low carbon steel medium carbon steel and high carbon steel because uh, you can see from these percentage numbers that more and more carbon is added to the uh, slabs of iron that are made into their pure elemental iron form and uh, the amount of carbon changes and as it is as the amount of carbon added changes so do the characteristics of steel changes as soon as they add carbon to it it is called steel Steel is, by definition, a mixture of carefully measured amount of carbon to iron. So you can see the percentage amounts, uh, how much carbon can be found in uh, low carbon steel, medium carbon steel, and high carbon steel. And uh, these amounts are, to do a little bit of math, this is 0.15%. Okay, not 15%, not 1.5% is 0.15 percent okay and the high carbon steel for example here is high carbon steel 0.3 that's not 3 percent that's 0.3 percent it's less than 1 percent okay so keep that one in mind that all of these amounts are less than 1 percent carbon and uh, low carbon steel is what you can see most often in uh, uh, structural steels like I-beams or channel steel and they are easily weldable they are fairly flexible if more ca more carbon is added to elemental iron then uh, they make uh, bolts uh, axles and shafts out of it for uh, automotives and in uh, machinery and uh, when even more carbon is added it's called high carbon steel and uh, manufacturers make uh, tools such as hammers, hammerhead is high carbon steel, chisels, or not, not only the hammerhead, the, well, 
if it's got a metal sh uh, metal handle, then the whole hammer is made out of high carbon steel. Uh, uh, chisels and uh, other such uh, items, some uh, some saw blades are also high carbon. Uh, and also hardened uh, nail pullers are also high carbon and uh, they are rigid not very flexible like uh, a flexible uh, nail puller wouldn't make any sense or hammer with claws that bend wouldn't make much sense so they are all made out of high carbon steel and uh, these items are not very not very weldable these ones are uh, tolerably weldable and these ones can be readily welded cut chopped and fabricated so this is where uh, you find structural steels now lastly a little bit of uh, number crunching here is uh, what these percentages mean in uh, practical terms is for example if you have 0.1% carbon in a product 0.1, not 1%, 0.1% carbon. That means that out of 100 kilogram steel, which is 100 kilogram steel is about as heavy as this countertop here, which is uh, four feet that way and uh, two feet this way. That's about 100 kilograms of steel. Uh, you'll find out of 100 kilograms, 99.9 .9 kilograms is iron and 0.1% is carbon. And if in a high carbon steel, for example, the high carbon con the uh, carbon content is 0.3 percent, that means that if you have a product, a finished product that weighs 100 kilograms, and if it's high carbon, it's going to have 99.7 percent, sorry, 99.7 kilograms of iron in it, and uh, 0.3 kilograms of carbon. Uh, to illustrate the 0.3 kilograms is uh, uh, this weight here from our weight set this is a hundred grams so two of these is 200 grams and if I had a third one that would be 300 grams in comparison to the size of the countertop you can see it's a fairly negligible amount but uh, but uh, if I have just one of these in an amount of steel that uh, would be the size of this countertop that makes the countertop here or tabletop here low carbon steel uh, fairly soft fairly weak and uh, readily weldable if I have 300 grams of uh, uh, carbon added to it I'm just gonna do it like so if I have 300 grams of carbon to it then it's gonna make it brittle and very strong uh, and not really, not really weldable high carbon steel. One more thing uh, about steel making that it's not just iron and uh, a measured amount of carbon that's added to it. Uh, realistically, there's always, always a little bit of impurity in uh, in the uh, or with the iron, and they also add not only carbon but all steel contains manganese. And manganese is also an element, a metallic element, and uh, can be found here. And there is about half a percent of manganese in low carbon steel, or medium or high carbon steel, or any kind of steel, basically. Typically, uh, there's half a percent of manganese in it. Uh, that's to control uh, rusting and to uh, make steel longer lasting. And again, half a percent of manganese in terms of numbers would be out of a hundred kilograms of uh, steel, it would be it would be half a kilo of manganese. So a uh, hundred kilograms of high carbon steel doesn't really contain 99.7 percent iron uh, because uh, half a kilo is uh, manganese, so it contains 99.2 kilograms of iron, half a kilo of manganese, and uh, and uh, 300 grams of carbon. So that's basically the steel making process. Steel, again, is always, always a mix of elemental pure iron with a carefully, carefully calculated measured amount of carbon. And there's always manganese in it too.